Hey everyone, it's That Math Magician, and on this video we're going to take a look at arithmetic sequences again, and this time hopefully have a way to develop the equation for an arithmetic sequence. Now let's go ahead and just review that definition on what an arithmetic sequence is. Remember, an arithmetic sequence is where you're adding the same value every time to every term as you move through the sequence. So, in the previous videos, we found out that there were two major components of arithmetic sequences. The first was is that we had to find the common difference. Sometimes we think of that as our growth. How is it changing from each term to the next? The other big component there was the zero term. Remember, we always start off with our sequence. We usually start with that first term. We always want to find that zero term as well. The reason why we focus on the common difference, and the zero term is that both of those pieces are actually going to help us come up with the equation for an arithmetic sequence. So let me go ahead and just show you some similarities to that um, formula to find the uh, equation for an arithmetic sequence and how when we're given one, we can definitely find that equation. So let's go ahead and look at the similarities. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and write down the formula for the equation of an arithmetic sequence. It comes out like this. T of n equals d times n plus, and I always like to write this out as t of zero. Now, we're not really familiar with how that's set up at the moment, right? The notation's a little different than what we're used to. But what I think might be helpful is that if I write down an equation that we should all be very familiar with at this point, y equals mx plus b. We like that equation. That equation is used for linear equations when we're dealing with lines where the growth is by just adding a number. Very, very similar to what we have going on with arithmetic sequences. So this is what we call sequence notation. As you see, all of these pieces are actually lining up the same way we would with y equals mx plus b. We're just notating those different terms a little differently. So instead of y, we have t of n. And that's going to help us determine what the value is at a specific term number. Okay, That's what t of n refers to. It's that sequence. It's helping us get that number at that term. We have D. Well, D is just our common difference. Common difference is how is the sequence growing? Very similar to M, which represents slope. Both of those terms refer to growth, be it in a line or in a sequence. Same idea there. We have N here, which is representing the term number. So we're looking at the first term. If we were looking at the first term, we would put N equals one. If we were looking at the fourth term, we would put n equals four. If we were looking at the 100th term, we would put n equals 100. That n represents where in the sequence are we looking at for that term number. Very similar to where x, right? These are both our independent variables. Finally, at the end here, we have t of zero. That refers to the zero term. It literally is saying, plug a zero in, to our sequence, what's the term at the zero place, our zero term? Very similar to our B term when we're dealing with lines. Remember, B is the y-intercept. We also sometimes call it the zero term or the starting place. Again, same idea here. Where is the line starting at, at zero? Where is our sequence starting at, at zero, okay? So that's our notation for creating uh, an equation for an arithmetic sequence. Very similar to y equals mx plus b. All we have to do now is learn how to use this to help us find different terms in the equation. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and just erase that because we don't need to have that equation there because we're learning how to deal with this new notation. Now let's go ahead and look at a brand new arithmetic sequence and we'll figure out how we can find the equation for that sequence. So let's go ahead and look at the arithmetic sequence 
Uh, let's see, I'm gonna make one up on the fly here. Let's go ahead and look at two, comma, seven, comma, 12, comma, 17. I'm gonna put three ellipses after that to know that that is going on forever. Remember that sequence will continue on till infinity. It's not ending there. Now the question you might see is, given this sequence, determine the equation, or sometimes we say, determine the rule. Rule and equation, they're kind of the same word for the same thing, right? Two different words meaning the same thing. So we're given this sequence here, and now we have to figure out what our equation is for that sequence. Well, we know we're gonna start off with t of n equals. That's just like the y equals part, not changing. We'll always start with t of n equals. Now d here, we need to figure out what our common difference is. Remember, with common difference, we're looking at how is this sequence changing from one term to the next. Some of you guys might be able to see it. Some of you guys might not be able to see it automatically. And remember, if you're one of those people who are not seeing what the pattern is just by looking at it, you can always figure out your common difference by taking one of the terms, I'll take 12, and subtract it from the one before it. We always gotta take the one we're looking at, subtract it from the one before. So I'm gonna do 12 minus seven. I see that that equals five. So we know that this common difference here, some of you saw it already, is just adding five as we move from each term to the next. So instead of writing D, I'm going to write five. Now we're gonna leave N there, it's five N. We're not gonna change the N to anything that's like that x variable, it's independent, we wanna leave that there. The final thing we have to find now is we need to figure out what our zero term is. Remember, when we're looking at this equation, we're starting off with our first term, our second term, our third, and our fourth. But now we wanna think about what would that zero term be? What would be the term before the first term? Well, to figure that out, I'm gonna write it off to the side here. We covered it in the previous video, and if you wanna look at that, I go in a little more in depth on how to find that. Remember, all you have to do is take your first term. Our first term here is two, and you need to subtract out your common difference. We found out that our common difference was five, so take the first term, subtract the common difference. We find out that two minus five equals negative three. That means our zero term here is minus three. That right there is our equation in sequence notation defining this sequence here. It says t of n equals five n minus three. Now, one big reason why we come up with these equations is because for example, you might come across a question that says, Given this sequence right here, what's the 100th term? That's the kind of question you might see. So you might see this question, what is the 100th term in that equation? Now, you definitely, definitely don't wanna just keep writing this out 100 times to see that term. That's very wasteful for time's sake, right? But what's really nice is that now that we have this equation set up in sequence notation, all I have to do is take that equation, which is t of n, but instead of putting in an n, instead I'm gonna put in 100, because I'm interested at the term in the 100th place. That's what n represents, the place in the sequence. So I'm trying to find out the term number in the 100th spot. So I rewrite the equation here, five, times n, but again, we're changing n to be 100. I'm gonna still minus three. Now I can solve this right expression here and find out what is that 100th term in our sequence. So we just gotta do a little math here. Five times 100 is 500 minus three. Well, 500 minus three is 497. That tells us that the 100th term in this sequence will end up being 497.
That's how we find out our equations for arithmetic sequences. Again, very similar to y equals mx plus b. It's just a different notation that we're going to be using. All right, guys, it's that math magician, and I'll see you on the next video.